I have not been quiet about the fact that Tyler Perry's purchase, his creation, his building of the Tyler Perry Studios just outside of Atlanta, I think is one of the greatest accomplishments of a black person in the area of celebrity and business in my lifetime. Probably in the past 100 years, he is the first black person in American history to build and own his own major film production studio. He is the first one. And we come from a legacy of great black actors and great black actresses. Tyler Perry is the first to do it. I salute my brother. I commend my brother. I am proud of my brother. My only concern with Tyler Perry's work, his professional work as a film producer, is I pray for the day, I wish for the day, and I hope for the day that our big brother Tyler Perry can evolve his content. I would like for you, brother Tyler Perry, to evolve your content at some point. I understand you've put out a lot of money. I understand you have to spend a lot of money to do what you do. Although you are a millionaire, quite possibly a billionaire, you have bills and your bills are much more expensive than my bills. So I understand that you may have to stick with the Medea brand for quite some time because that is what black people like to see. I understand from a business perspective, it makes no sense for you to change the quality of your content when it is Medea that has made you who you are in this world. I understand that. So I'm not telling you to give up Medea. I'm telling you that in a, I'm asking you rather, in addition to Medea, brother Tyler Perry, could you start introducing some racially relevant and racially reaffirming content to your library of movies? I'm asking you to add some racially relevant and some racially affirming content to your video library. I know why you can't give up Medea. We don't need to talk about it. Black folks are stuck where they are and you have to stay there because that is how you made your brand. No disrespect, I understand. But can we start to do some documentary movies? How about a documentary on Queen Mother Nanny of the Maroons who defeated the British, an elderly black woman in the hills of Jamaica? How about a movie on the greatest black leader in American history, the Honorable Frederick Douglass? How about a movie on the Haitian Revolution? How about a movie on Ida B. Wells? How about a movie on Fannie Lou Hamer? Maybe you're making one. I'm not aware. How about a movie on the Denmark Vesey slave insurrection conspiracy? How about a movie on the Gabriel Prosser slave insurrection conspiracy? There's so many great stories and epics and tragedies in the black experience. And you clearly have the ability to bring these ideas to life on the big stage. You have your own black owned studio, Tyler Perry. I'm not criticizing you, brother. I'm not condemning you. I am a supporter of your work. I'm simply asking you, brother, to be a little bit more responsible with the content. You've been at this for a while. I know it's not easy, but can you start? Slowly, my brother, slowly. One positive, racially affirming video once every five years. How about one every five years? That's all I'm asking for. So other than that, I have no issues with my brother Tyler Perry. I just need you to start giving us some relevant, positive, race-based content. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today, Tyler Perry. That's not what I want to talk to you about. I saw a clip. Someone sent me a clip of you this morning. I am in Newark, New Jersey at the time. I'm going to be filming for my documentary. The Shockumentary, America's Psychoacademic War Against Black Boys. I am in no way on your level. I don't have your expertise in that area, but this is something that has to be done. Someone has to tell the true story of how public school is destroying the emotional health, mental health, 
and life opportunities for black boys. So that is a documentary that I'm working on. And that's why I'm in Newark, New Jersey. We're going to be filming, interviewing some parents and professionals today. Tyler Perry, somebody sent me a clip of an interview that you did recently where you were discussing how you don't want to discuss race with your seven-year-old son at this time. Now, I don't know if you said this to avoid discussing the issue because I know how media likes to use what black men say about race against us. And although you're a very successful brother, you're still black. So maybe you just said this to uh, distract from the topic and move on to something else, which I respect and understand. But according to this article that I'm reading, it says, quote, Tyler Perry says, quote, I haven't had the conversation with Amon because he's only seven and I want to hold out as long as I can. I don't want to tell him that there are people who will judge him because of the color of his skin, because right now he's he's in school with every race and all these kids are in the purest form. When he describes his friends, he never describes them by race. So the moment he loses that innocence is going to be a very, very sad day for me. I'm going to read your quote again, Brother Perry, and I assume it's accurate. I'm going to assume it's accurate, although I know the media can distort what we say. And then I just want to give you respectfully an analysis. And I'm not really speaking to you, Brother Perry. I'm speaking to all black parents and especially middle to upper and elite, financially elite black parents and celebrity parents who will have to tackle this issue of educating their children about race. I'm sure you know who I am, but in case you don't, I am a doctor of clinical psychology and I am a certified school psychologist, which I have studied for the past and or practiced for the past 30 years of my life. So I just want to read what you said again, and I want to give a psychopolitical analysis of your statements in the interest of educating all black parents when it comes to teaching their young children about race and racism. Quote, I haven't had the conversation with Amon because he's only seven, and I want to hold out as long as I can. I don't want to tell him that there are people who will judge him because of the color of his skin, because right now he's in a school with every race and all these kids are in the purest form. When he describes his friends, he never defines them by race. So the moment he loses that innocence is going to be a very, very sad day. Okay. First of all, Brother Perry, right from the beginning, I want you to understand that the psychological research in the field of psychology, both black and white, has pretty much made it clear that children not only know their race by the age of four years old, your son knew he was black at four, roughly around four, some a little younger, some a little older, by four on average, black children know that they are black. White children know that they are white. Asian children know they are Asian. Mexican children know they are Mexican. Native American children know that they are Native American by the age of four. Not only do they know their race at the age of four, Brother Perry, they also tend to know the level of respect and status their race has in the world by four. Now with your son, because you are a very financially successful man, he may not yet know the status of black people in America. He might not yet know the status of black people in the world. He may have been shielded from that, but I can assure you, your money has not shielded your son from knowing he is black. More importantly, Brother Perry, I will bet you your last dollar that those non-African children in your son's classroom knows he is black 
And they know that they are white, Asian, Arab, East Indian, Latino, Mexican. They know who they are. They know who, you, who your son is. Now, you say your son doesn't reference his classmates by race. That is true because you have failed. I don't want to use the word failed. You have not yet educated him as to who he is and who they are. But I am quite certain, and you can take this to the bank, those white children, those Asian children in that class, know that your son is black, know he's not one of them, and they discuss him at home with their parents. And they discuss you at home with their parents. Tyler Perry and all black parents listening, rich, poor, middle class, upper class, elite, Stop being afraid to indulge your young children in a conversation about race once they make it known to you that they understand that they are somehow different from other people. Dr. Umar's rule for introducing the education and concept of race to your children is based on when your child makes it clear to you that they know that they are different or that other children are different from them. When they come home and say, Daddy, what does being black mean? What does white mean? Why am I a different color? It's now to talk about race. Because whether you don't want to admit it or not, your child is being programmed your son, rich or poor, is being programmed about race in school. He's being programmed about race on the Internet. He's being programmed about race on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. He's being programmed about race by his teacher, his tutor, his athletic coaches, his extracurricular activity coaches. He's being educated about race with every book he opens, every magazine he sees, every television show or commercial. You cannot hide race and racism from your child. All we can do is choose to be ignorant. All we can do is choose to be ignorant. If your son knows he's black, Tyler, it's time to teach him about his blackness. Your son is a black boy. He's not a girl. He is a male child. And you yourself know, because I'm sure you have your stories of racism in Hollywood. I'm sure there are white film producers who hate your guts because of how successful you are. And I'm sure they try to sabotage your work every chance they get. So you know about racism because the higher you go, the more racism you experience. Not the less. Not the less. The higher you go in this world, the more racism you get as a black man. Your comforts are improved. Your conveniences are enhanced, but the racism is intensified. You have to dot your I's and cross your T's more than any other producer in Hollywood. And I know you would agree with me. Your son being black and your son being the son of Tyler Perry, he's going to have to be on his P's and Q's more than any other black boy because his family and his father has more to lose than any other black family. Your son has more to lose and you have more to lose than almost any other black man in this country with few exceptions. Jay-Z, Bob Johnson, Denzel, a few others, but you guys are at the top. Y'all have to be extra careful and you have to raise your sons extra carefully and educate them even more so on the issue of race and racism. So by the time when your son makes you aware that he knows what race is, it's time to educate him. It's time to bring out the books. You should already have images of great black men on your walls in your home. You should already have images of great black men on the walls in your son's bedroom. Remember, he's being programmed every day. Your son goes to an exclusive school, I assume, with rich white people, rich Asians, rich Arabs, rich Native Americans, other rich blacks. I can assure you, your son is only one 
of a handful of black children in that school. He is a minority despite your money. And one thing that rich blacks have to understand, your money can only protect your child but so much. This is America. Rich blacks are given conveniences. You are not given privileges. Don't confuse your conveniences with privileges. Don't confuse your access with privilege. There is nothing in the American legal code that protects rich black people any more than it protects poor black people. Go ask Bill Cosby. Go ask Bill Cosby. Go ask Bill Cosby. When they want to get you, they will get you. And if there is no true proof, they will simply make it up. I know you know this. Now, here's the issue I'm having somewhat, Brother Tyler. It seems as if you think or you want you wanted the interviewer to think that your son isn't aware of race yet. And he's seven years old. That's impossible. Brother Tyler Perry, that's impossible, brother. Your son knows he's black. And he knows those other children are not black. He knows what race he is, which means your education for him should have already began when he first made you aware that he knew what race he was around the age of four or five. He should already be two, three years into his racial education by his celebrity father. Don't get me wrong, Tyler Perry. It's important for you and it's important for all black parents to let their children know what I teach you about race and racism, you are not to take to the world. That's rule number one. Your education with your child about race and racism is between you and your child. It is not for your son to go to school and tell his white classmates that I'm the father of civilization. All of you come from me. You would not be where you are, white students, had it not been for the enslavement of my ancestors. There's no need for that. There's no need for that. That could harm your son. It could harm you. I always and I routinely tell black parents, teach your children that their racial education is a confidential thing. It is a secret thing that stays in this family. What I teach you about being black, what I teach you about white racism, you will keep it to yourself. You are never to divulge it. Now, if the teacher asks you a question about an African hero, if the teacher asks you a question about an African event, you can answer that with the information I taught you. But you do not give them the beliefs and principles that I teach you. You can answer questions about black history. You can answer questions about black heroes. You do not ever divulge the principles and beliefs that I teach you about blackness and racism. Because guess what? The white parents tell their white children, you don't ever say this around black people. The Asian parents tell their Asian children, you don't ever say this about black people. When you are around them, you act like there's no differences. When you are around them, you treat them how you want to be treated. But always keep in mind, you are not them and they are not you. We must educate our children properly. So number one, when your child lets you know that they're black, they know they're black. They know they're different. Your education must begin. It must begin. Remember, your child is going to be educated anyway. I'm sure there's probably not a black history class at your son's school. I'm sure there's probably not a black history club at your son's school. I'm pretty sure nothing even is done for Black History Month at your son's school. I'm pretty sure of that. So your son is being programmed about white supremacy, white history, the greatness of whiteness. And the fact that your son doesn't describe his friends in any way, shape, form, or fashion by race tells me he might possibly be dealing with some racial identity issues. Some racial identity issues. This is one of the problems with the children of academically elite, socially elite, financially elite black parents. We wait too long to begin educating them about race and racism. I'm not talking about you, Tyler Perry. I don't live in your house. 
I'm using your situation to educate all black parents. And I hope you don't mind this. This is not a condemnation. It's not a criticism. It's not a dismissal or cancellation. I'm simply using your conversation as a teaching moment for black parents. On average, rich black parents wait too long to educate their children about race and racism. And here's the problem. Tyler Perry, you might say, Dr. Umar. Tyler Perry, you might say, Dr. Umar. Brother Perry, you might say, Dr. Umar. What's wrong with waiting until he's eight or nine? You know what's wrong, Tyler Perry, about waiting until your son is eight or nine to tell him about race? You know what's wrong with that? If you wait until he's eight or nine, the programming he's getting from his white teachers, his white school, the programming that he's getting from white society, white media, white internet, white peers, the programming he's getting from his white peers will have already solidified his racial consciousness, his racial identity, and more important, Brother Perry, his racial self-esteem. I don't care how wealthy you are, your son's racial self-esteem can be devastated if you wait until he's 8, 9, or 10 to tell him about race because his friends are not as politically mature as their parents. Your son's white and Asian classmates are not as politically mature as their parents. White parents know what not to say around black people. White adults know what not to say around black people and even they slip up sometimes and even they slip up sometimes. So when your son is playing with them white kids and playing with them Asian kids, they are going to inadvertently say disrespectful things about black people. They are going to inadvertently say disrespectful things about your son's skin color. They're going to inadvertently say disrespectful things about what their parents taught them about Africans. And here's the question, Tyler Perry. Again, I'm using you as a metaphor, a representative example. I'm not singling you out. Here's the thing, brother Tyler. Does your son know how to respectfully, non-emotionally, respond to his white classmates when there's no adults around to correct them white kids when there's no adults around to correct them asian kids and they say things like black people come from africa and africa ain't nothing but monkeys and diseases when they say things like black people should be happy that slavery happened because it brought y'all into a civilized society all black men do is kill each other make babies sell drugs play basketball does your son know how to not get angry and politely let the white boy know that with all due respect, your analysis is incorrect? Had it not been for my people, your people would still be in the caves of Europe. Well, maybe not say something to that extent, but maybe let them know my ancestors built this country. Had it not been for my ancestors, we might, we might not even be here having this conversation. Are you aware that more than half of the critical inventions in America, everything from the sneakers you have on your feet to the car your parents drive, do you know that the lights are on right now in this school because black people invented the machine that tied the top of the shoe to the bottom? Black people invented the self-lubricating car engine that allowed your white parents to drive you into school today? Do you know that it was a black scientist, Louis Latimer, who taught America and Europe and Asia, how to light up an entire city at night, how to light up an entire industrial building at light permanently by only flipping a switch before that black man came up with that invention. Light, the light bulbs had to be changed regularly and often. There was no such thing as continuous 24 hour lighting until the black man made it so. Do you know we invented the stop light, the three way light? The gas, the gas mask, the golf tee, the radio transmitter, the helicopter, the cell phone, the internet. Tyler Perry, if you don't educate your son about race and racism, he will be educated by his classmates and they will do it in a way that destroys your son's self-esteem. You must teach him. Your son is a black boy. 
He's considered the menace of American society, whether his father is a mogul or not. He don't need to know that at seven, but he does need to be proud of who he is at seven. And he does need to be careful about what he says around non-Africans at seven. If you're going to tell me, Brother Tyler, if you're going to tell me, Brother Tyler, if you're going to tell me, Brother Tyler, that you don't think your son has encountered racism yet, I'm going to have to accuse you of being disingenuous. If you're going to tell me your son has not had a brush with racism yet at the age of seven, I'm going to have to accuse you of being disingenuous. I don't care how wealthy you are. You are not going to tell me that a seven-year-old black boy, you are not going to tell me that a seven-year-old black boy has not yet encountered race and racism. More so in your son's case. More so in your son's case. More so in your son's case because he belongs to an elite family, travels in elite circles where a lot of other black children are not present, which takes me to another point, Brother Tyler. Which takes me to another point, Brother Tyler. Which takes me to another point, Brother Tyler, for the sake of your son's racial self-esteem and racial consciousness. I'm not asking you to put a Marcus Garvey t-shirt on your son. I'm not asking you to hang a red, black, and green flag outside of your house, although I would appreciate if you did. I'm not asking you to give him a red, black, and green wristband. I'm not asking you to give him African locks. But I am asking you to start introducing him to other black children. One of the biggest mistakes that financially and academically elite black parents make is you exclude your black children from black society. You exclude your black children from black society. You exclude your black children from black society. And in excluding your black children from black society, they start identifying and over identifying with white folks. They have no connection, no relationship. They have no way of engaging the American African community or the larger African community. So when your son gets around regular black boys, I didn't say from the ghetto. I didn't say working class. I didn't say middle class. Your son can go around middle class black boys and he will still feel out of place because you have given him no psychosocial development around his own people. You have afforded your son no psychosocial development around his own people. So Tyler Perry, brother, I'm telling you, for the sake of your family, for the sake of our people, make sure your son has some play dates with some other seven-year-old black boys down in Atlanta. Make their parents sign a non-disclosure statement. Make their parents sign a non-disclosure statement because you have to protect yourself, Tyler Perry. You have to protect yourself, Tyler Perry. You're not a revolutionary pan-Africanist like Dr. Umar. You understand me? You're not a school psychologist out here on a crusade to save every black child you can across the world. That's not you. You're not the revolutionary leader. You're an entertainer and a businessman. So make those black parents sign a non-disclosure. If you have to bring those black children to your house because you fear your son's safety, then bring the black kids to your house, Tyler Perry. Twice a month, have a, a black boys day. You don't have to call it that. You don't have to tell your son it's that, but bring four or five black boys over there. Have a couple from the hood. Have one from a middle class family. Have one from an upper class family. Get another black boy from another rich and famous black man and let them come to your house and hang out with your seven-year-old son so he can get used to black children of every persuasion because we are a unique and diverse people. Yes, we share a lot. We have a common identity and we have a common experience in America. But we are still diverse in our opinions, our attitudes, our preferences, our likes. Give your son psychosocial development and exposure to other black children. But please, Tyler Perry, and I'm talking to all black celebrities and academically elite and financially elite black parents. Don't isolate your children from their own people because you rich and famous. Don't do that. He will suffer for it later in life. He will suffer for it later in life. 
when they let you know they know about race, you need to introduce the conversation. No matter how primitively they make you aware. Why am I different? Why am I dark? And your son, Tyler Perry, your son is a melanated African like his father. I haven't seen your queen. I'm assuming she's black, Tyler Perry. I'm assuming she's black. Okay. But your son is not only black in a sea of white. Your son is not only black in a sea of white. Your son is melanated black. Your son is not African vanilla. He's not African lemonade. He's not African moonshine. Your son is melanated. You and I are about the same complexion. Your son, I'm assuming, is our complexion. Little lighter, little darker, but he's not light skin. He don't have straight hair. He don't have green or blue eyes. Your son is obviously an African. So there is no passing as white. There is no light skin supremacy privilege. There's none of that. He is a black boy and you're going to have to talk to him about skin color. You're going to have to let them know that this chemical in your body, this energy that gives you your color comes directly from God. This energy, Tyler Perry, that gives your son his color, melanin, is composed of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon. It is the chemical of the gods. Our ancestors in Nile Valley, ancient Africa, referred to the chemical that makes our skin black as a divine energy and a power that electrifies the spirit, the inner spirit of African life. It is this melanin that's responsible for LeBron James' talent. This melanin is responsible for your success, Tyler Perry. This melanin is responsible for protecting us in the sun. This melanin is what gives us a special connection to the universe. Your son needs to be educated about the spiritual power and property of melanin. The universe is black. The universe is carbon. Melanin is composed of carbon. This is a God gene. This is a God gene. Your son is a black God. Are you teaching him that, Tyler Perry? Your son is a black God. Are you teaching him that, Tyler Perry? I didn't say make him a narcissist. I did not say make him think he's better than any other person. I believe in the absolute equality of the races. I believe that black children are no better than whites, Chinese, Arab, East Indian. I believe in the equality of humanity. But I also believe in the dignity of I believe in the divine dignity of African people. And you have to teach your son who he is. Don't let that school educate your son about who he is. Are you telling me, Tyler Perry? Your son has not asked you? Daddy. Baba. Or Mama. Why are all these black people being killed by the police? And why aren't the police being held accountable for it? Daddy, mama, while all the commercials on TV are black men with white women and black women with white men. Daddy, mama, why are all the shows on TV black man, non-black woman, black woman, non-black Man, your son can see black children are intelligent. Black children develop faster than the children of any other race. Your son is a thinking black boy. Your son is an intelligent black boy. I want to know, has his father validated and verified his African identity? Brother Tyler Perry. What are you telling him about police brutality? What are you telling him about African history? Don't let them 
steal your son's consciousness. Don't let them rob him of his African birthright. Tyler Perry, you have worked hard to get where you are. You have worked very hard to get where you are. Don't tell me, brother. You have built the most unique black movie studio in American history only to give it all over to a non-African woman who your son marries because his father didn't give him any race pride.